This is a walkthrough of an app that helps you tune your drive-by-wire throttle mapping. It is applicable to Gen 5 GM vehicles that have a driver demand table that looks like this. So the rows are referenced by accelerator pedal position from 0 to 100%. The columns are referenced by vehicle speed. And the cell values represent the amount of torque that the ECU is requesting of the vehicle. Now in this particular example, my vehicle uh, speed axes run from 0 to 210 kilometers per hour. Your axes may be different and that's okay. Additionally, the cell values here represent engine torque. Yours may represent axle torque uh, and preliminary testing indicates uh, that that also is okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this far top left blank cell up here. We're going to left click it. That highlights the entire table. Then we are going to right click it and we're going to select the second option here, copy with axis. All right, we're done with VCM editor for now. Over here in VCM scanner, I've already recorded my data log. So what I'm going to do is click log file, export log file. I'm going to select comma separated text or CSV, the entire log, and then I'm going to uncheck this option here. So we are not going to interpolate data gaps and you're going to export this as a CSV file. So this is the app. I'm actually going to start in the documentation tab because I wanted to point out quickly that uh, there's a section down here you're going to want to read. Uh, here are some tips about how to best log your data to use this app. And then down here uh, are the list of parameters that must be included in your log in order for the app to run. So make sure you read over this documentation tab before using the app for the first time. Let's move over here to the inputs tab. So this is where we are going to upload that log that we exported. And then in this text box over here, if you click into it, right click, paste, that will drop in the driver demand table with axes that we previously copied to our clipboard. So the app has automatically extracted every observation from that log in which the accelerator pedal is increasing. And that data is visualized down here. On the right, you can see we have a series of charts. There are one per transmission gear. And the axes here are engine RPM versus pedal percent. And this is just a scatter plot of that extracted data. And then this table here, uh, this is a representation of the driver demand table. Uh, it has, if you look at the axes here, the pedal and the vehicle speed, these correspond to whatever you pasted into that text box up above. And so this tells you which cells in that driver demand matrix uh, were hit in the, with the extracted data. And the colors and numbers correspond to the average transmission gear uh, that was selected in that cell. So, you know, these plots are just informational. Uh, as long as these automatically pop up um, after you upload your log and paste in your drive demand table, then the data was properly read in and processed. Additionally, you may potentially see a warning or error message here. And if so, that's something you may need to address. Now I'm going to move on to the load versus pedal tab. This tab is really the heart of the app. This is where we are going to select how responsive we want our throttle to be. You can see in the top here in the middle, there's a chart. The vertical axis represents engine load from zero to 100%. And I think of that as the percent of available torque that is being delivered. The horizontal axis is your accelerator pedal also from zero to 100%. And you can see there are five different uh, preset profiles that you can select from to determine um, you know, what profile you want your uh, throttle to have. And as we change this uh, in the radio button here, we'll see that change reflected on the chart. Now down here below, there are a series of charts. They all have the same axes as above, so load versus pedal. Uh, but there is one per driver demand table column. So those are referenced by vehicle speed, 10 kilometers per hour, 20 kilometers per hour, 30, 40, and so on. Uh, and for each of these charts, you'll see that there's uh, colorful scatter plot data here. That is the extracted data corresponding to that column uh, of the driver demand table. We also have solid black points connected by lines. Uh, that essentially represents a moving average. Uh, however, each one of those points 
corresponds to one of the pedal bins or rows of your driver demand table. So notice that they're clustered pretty closely together on the far left side, and then they're spaced uh, wider apart on the right side, just because that's how those rows are defined in the driver demand table. Now the last element shown on these charts is this dashed red line here. That's our target. That's whichever profile we selected up above. And so basically these visuals give you insight into what exactly it is that the app does. So if we look here, for instance, uh, the app will know that, okay, our target profile is this dashed red line and our average profile is this black one. So for instance, at this point here, so for, um, for the driver demand cell corresponding to 30 kilometers per hour and uh, pedal percent, uh, what 44, I think this is, uh, we can actually pull torque away because that will bring our average uh, curve down to our target curve. Uh, conversely, for like these points in here, uh, the app knows that we can add torque because that will take this average line and push it up to uh, meet our target. And so that's basically what the app does. It goes through uh, every column. Um, it compares the average uh, load curve versus your target load curve. And then it automatically calculates uh, those corrections um, to you know bring your your load curve uh, in line with the target. Uh, I did want to also show off one additional feature here. In addition to the five preset profiles, there's also this custom option here, and I just want to show you how that works. If we click custom. Uh, we see some additional content has populated down here. So first, what you're going to do is you're going to select one of the uh, existing profiles as sort of your starting point. So maybe you wanna start with like Peppy, for instance. All right, now these here, these are the values uh, that define that Peppy curve. So we can edit these however we want. Maybe we wanna take this and increase it to 85 and maybe increase this to 77 and increase this to you know 66 or something. All right. Now all checks have passed, so I'd go ahead and apply changes. If I click this, then we'll see up here, we have our custom curve. As we can see in the lower portion, um, it aligns with that peppy curve because that's what we started with. And then I just edited a few of those sort of uh, points in the middle. And so we can see here, that's where that curve now, um, you know, separates itself from that peppy curve. And then it lines up here again. So you can kind of play with this as you want, and maybe you know, maybe you come up with a custom curve you like yourself. You can basically just take this whole thing, copy it, paste it into like a text file offline or something, um, and then you sort of always have that available. You can always just paste that right in here. So that's how the load versus pedal tab works. Now let's move over to the results tab. So here we are greeted with a colorful table. This is our new driver demand table. So what the app has done, uh, the, it started out as a baseline with the driver demand table that you pasted into that text box in the inputs tab. Then in the load versus pedal tab, it compared your average load profiles versus your desired profile, and it automatically made those corrections. Uh, and then additionally, it goes through a, a pretty simple smoothing step uh, just to try to um, address some of the potential discontinuities that occur. Uh, and this is that outcome. Now there are two uh, features up here that are pretty simple that I'd like to discuss. First one on the left, deceleration multiplier, basically does exactly what it sounds like. Uh, if I put this up to 1.2, um, basically what it did is every cell in here uh, that is negative, it just made it 20% more negative. So that's uh, totally optional. Over here on the right, this one called max speed to copy to the right. Uh, what this does is it takes one of the columns out here and just copies those values all the way to the right. Um, this may or may not make sense for the axle torque uh, vehicles, but for the engine torque vehicles like mine is, um, I, I think it does make sense. And let me explain why. If I move back to my inputs tab here. Recall this is the, the data I was able to log, you know, the cells in that driver demand table I was able to hit. And so the far right side of this represents, you know, very high speeds that, you know, you probably shouldn't be trying to log data at those speeds uh, on, the, on the street. Um, so like these cells out here, instead of just kind of leaving them at their stock values, we can kind of take our um, kind of our highest speed values that are good and just copy those to the right. 
And if, if you decide to do that, um, my suggestion is don't use the column furthest to the right, which for me would be 160 kilometers per hour. You could use the one just right to the left of that. So for me, that would be 140 kilometers per hour. The reason for that is edges are hard to smooth. So if you choose the one kind of one to the left, it should give you more stable values. So I'll go, go ahead and use that feature here. Change this to 140. And so now you'll notice in this 140 column, all these values were copied to the right. And I did that for the entire column. All right. Like I said, this is our new driver demand table. So we can download this by clicking this CSV button right here. So now we can copy and paste this back into VCM Editor. And so we are not going to select the entire table. Instead, we are just going to select the values here, uh, not including the axes. So I've highlighted all that, right click, copy. And then I can go back here to VCM Editor, click the top left cell that actually has a value in it um, with a color there. Um, left click that and right click and paste. There we go. So we've just updated our driver demand table. Now at this point, rather than just saving this and loading in your car and just sort of running off, uh, I do recommend you do some kind of spot checking and fine tuning. And I did add some additional capabilities in the tool here to help you with that. So at the bottom here are um, one dimensional profile views. So these, core, these represent a single slice through your driver, driver demand table. So on the left here, these are referenced by speed. So these are your columns in your table. And then over here, these are referenced by your pedal bin. So these are the rows of the driver demand table. And so you can just sort of inspect these to look for any potential kind of discontinuities or any sort of weirdness that you may want to sort of massage out by hand. Um, as just an example, right, right off the bat here, at this, you know, speed equals zero kilometers per hour. So that's the very first column, the far left of the table. You can see here, this all looks smooth at the top. This all looks pretty smooth at the bottom. There's a little bit of a bump here. So maybe this is a, you know, example of something that you would maybe want to hand massage out. And you're going to do that directly in the uh, VCM editor. There are two other areas where you may want to kind of focus your time. Um, one is basically the lower left uh, kind of quadrant uh, of this table. That corresponds to low speeds and high pedal percents. That's an area that's just difficult to log. Uh, so there may be some sort of weirdness in the data there. Um, another area you may want to look at is the sort of transition zone between your negatives and positives. So for me, that looks like something like this. It kind of travels down here. The reason you may want to look at that is that uh, by design, uh, this app will not make any significant changes to any of the negative valued cells. Um, across from that multiplier functionality um, that I displayed. Um, so it won't, for instance, like take this cell here, negative 28, it won't like turn that positive, again, kind of for safety reasons. Um, so you may want to play with sort of that transition area between the negatives and positives. And so down here, let's kind of show kind of two of those areas. So the, um, that last one I just mentioned was that transition area between negatives and positives. So here's an example of that. You know, our curve comes down like this, and then where it crosses this uh, dotted uh, zero line here, that's that kind of transition phase. So you may want to potentially do some massaging in those areas. Uh, the other one I mentioned was low speeds and high pedals. So I'll show an example of that. So here we're at pedal is at 62%. That's pretty high. Um, and if you look at the far left side of this, so that's the low speeds, you can see there's a little bit of jackiness here. So this is an area you may want to just sort of level off uh, maybe bump this value up a little bit, maybe, and then maybe just flatten these off just so it's smooth. And again, all that you're going to um, just kind of do uh, directly in VCM Editor right here. Uh, there are additional tools here you may want to take advantage of. Um, in VCM Editor, they have their own, uh, what they call 2D chart. It shows a bunch of profiles. Uh, this can be helpful to, um, you know, give you an, an indication as to how smooth your curves are. And then we, when you sort of think you're done, you can uh, use this 3D chart. This is nice too. You um, right click and drag here um, and you can just sort of inspect the whole thing and you know try to get it as smooth as possible. Um, yeah, and then once you're done with that sort of spot checking and hand massaging, then uh, yeah, I would save this, uh, load it to your car 
um, and, um, you know, and, and try it out and see if you like it. So that is the app in a nutshell.